Hello everyone, and welcome to another video of the Attack Reviews. Today we'll be looking at the i7 11700K and the i9 11900K. We've covered the basics for the Reculake and Z590 in the past videos, so you can check them if you haven't seen them already. So we finally got the top of the line 11900K and the second best Reculake, the 11700K. We'll be taking a look at just the 11700K first in today's video and the review for 11900K will be coming tomorrow. So spec wise, the two processors are actually the same. The only difference is the i9 has turbo velocity boost which is going to give it an extra 100 megahertz. So if you take a look at the price and spec chart, at least I'm confused right now. I mean, 100 megahertz does not justify the price difference between the i9 and the i7. And in our later tests, we actually confirm that without overclocking, they basically perform the same. So maybe the i9 has a better silicon, just like what happened with the uh, Kamen Lake 10850K and 10900K. Um, we'll find out. In today's video, we're pairing the 11700K with the ASUS Maximus 13 Hero we reviewed last time. We'll be using the same 16 gigs of GSCO DDR4 3200MHz CL14 memories, Western Digital SN850 PCIe 4.0 SSD, and a EVGA 3080 FTW3 video card. So let's start with CPUC. Um, as expected, it is 8 core and 16 thread. It has 125 watt of TDP and has exactly the same cache as the 11700 non-K version we reviewed last time. So let's start with the CPU-Z benchmarks. In CPU-Z, it is getting slightly higher score than the 11700 non-K version, and it is getting a little bit higher score than the 5800X in both single and multi-core testings. It will be a serious competitor to the 5800X, especially considering its 399 price tag. Uh, let's move to IDA64. Intel is still having a problem with the memory performance on Rocket Lake, even with the BIOS update. However, even with the lower number on memory performance, at least on paper, it is still pulling ahead in all real-world benchmarks. Next is Splendor. We're rendering both Classroom and BMW with the processor, and here is the result. The 11700K is slightly faster than a 5800X in BMW, but about 10% slower in Classroom. The score is actually very close to a 11700 non-K version with unlocked PL1. In 7-zip, again, it's very similar to 11700 non-K, and it is about 20% faster than a 10700. However, it is still slower than a 5800X. Next is Cinebench. We're running both R15 and R20 here. R20 will utilize AVX instructions and AVX frequency offset does matter here. In Cinebench R15, we also tested the OpenGL performance with the iGPU. So same as other few Rocky Lake chips we have already reviewed, it is about 30% faster than Kamen Lake. So the new XE architecture is really something to be excited for. As for the CPU part, it is not much faster compared to the non-K11700, but it's still about 25% increase over Kamen Lake. It's very impressive increase considering it's still on the 14 nanometer plus 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 node. In Cinebench R20, it is getting the same single core score as the 5800X, while being slightly slower in multi-core. However, it is the fastest among the Intel desktop CPUs we have tested so far. Next is V-Ray. It's a rendering benchmark that tests the CPU's performance in rendering pictures. Again, the 11700K is not as fast as the 5800X, but still marginally better than Kamen Lake. It has an average clock speed of 4.55 GHz, which is about the same as the non-K version. In Handbrake, we're transcoding a 1 minute and 31 second 4K video into 1080p H.264. It is 2 seconds faster than the non-K version, and it's a tie with the 5800X. In Y-Cruncher, it is a few benchmarks that actually utilize AVX 512. 
Um, it's almost exactly the same as the Nanke version, while being about 60% faster than a 5800X in multi-thread benchmark. So if your workload is AVX heavy, you still have a good reason to choose Intel. Next, let's take a look at its gaming performance. First, let's run 3D Mark. So in 3D Mark Time Spy, it is running about 2% faster than a Nanke version, which is within the margin of error, but it's still slightly slower than a 5800X. In Hitman 2, it is about 2 FPS faster than a Nanke version, and the 5800X is pulling way ahead in this game. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the trend continues. However, this time, it's a tie between Rocket Lake and the 5800X. In Dirt 5, the 11700K is pulling about 3 FPS ahead. Um, and it's about 8% faster than a 5800X. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it is also the fastest among the group. However, it is still slower than a 5800X in CPU game. So up to this point, I think you already noticed that on a default clock, it performs about the same as a non-K version, which actually makes a non-K version a very good choice at its price point. However, the reason for us to buy a K version is to overclock. So before we overclock it, let's run some Prime 95 and see its temperature and power consumption on our default clock. The cooler we're using today is a Corsair 360 H150 Pro AIO cooler with three PWM controlled fans. I enable AVX 1212 so that we can see the maximum possible power consumption. It thermal throttles even under default clock speed. And the maximum power consumption recorded was around 260 watts. And this is ridiculous for a desktop processor, but that's how AVX 1212 works. And that's why the LGA3647 Xeons are limiting the AVX 1212 frequency at a much lower speed to keep the thermals in spec for passive boot servers. Alright, enough of the default clock. Since we have a K version, the whole point is to overclock it. As we discussed in the past video reviews, Rocket Lake requires a much higher voltage compared to Comet Lake. I'm seeing voltages close to 1.5 volt even at stock speed. Let's enter the BIOS and see what ASUS has to say about this chip. So, we have a super low SP score of 61. It is predicting that the processor will need 1.6 volt for 5.20 core speed. That is ridiculously high. So let's start with 1.5 then. And it freezes immediately. So our goal here is to complete Cinematar 20. So after some tweaking, I did get it to 5.3 GHz old core with 1.62 volt. However, the chip is thermal throttling really bad, and the sentiment score is actually lower than the score of 5.2 GHz. But it is able to finish the CPU-Z benchmark without very bad thermal throttle. So um, after some tweaking, the best score I was able to get was at 5.2 GHz old core with 1.55 core voltage. And we're getting great improvements in CPU-Z and Cinebench R20 tests. We run Cinebench R15 and V-Ray as well. However, the highest frequency that I could get a finished V-Ray benchmark is only 5.1 GHz old core. But if we take a look at the score, it is impressive. I mean, a 700 plus CPU-Z single core score is basically the highest you can get on the market so far. And for Cinebench, we're getting about a 10% increase in performance, which I guess justifies the price difference between the K and the non-K version. Overall, I'm very impressed by how it performs. At just 399 MSRP, it is very hard to say no to it. It trade blows with the 5800X while being $50 cheaper, and it's got additional AVX 1212 support. And also it's got a wider motherboard choice, and also Thunderbolt 4. So Thunderbolt 4 is something you want to keep in mind because it will be the same connector and the same protocol with the upcoming USB 4.0. So it might be the standard for the external devices in the next few years. The only drawback I can think about it is its higher power consumption and the high heat dissipation. But still, even if you don't overclock it and just use it at a stock speed, it is still way faster than Comet Lake. But should you buy one? 
um, it depends. So if you're upgrading from something like KB Lake, then it's definitely a game changer. But if you have Coffee Lake or Kaiman Lake right now, you will be better off to wait for Outer Lake, which will come out at the end of this year. All right, that's it for today's video. So in a video tomorrow, we're gonna be taking a look at its bigger brother, the i9-11900K. But spoiler alert, they are basically the same thing. So I'm still trying to find a way to justify its price tag, but we'll see. All right, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.